G'day, how you going? Indianapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is where I like to teach beginners how to paint in acrylic. Nice and effective subjects. Uh, before I get started, I'll put some size on the canvas here so those people want to know how big my canvas is, they can see there. And I'll get some colours going up the screen as well. Now my videos are designed for you beginners to watch it a few times, see what's going to happen, get yourself set up, grab those colours or something similar and paint along with me. Now if you're very new to painting, do practice different subjects and then start incorporating them into full paintings alright. Now I've got some scribbling on my canvas here, I'll bring you over here and just show you what I'm up to okay. So I've got my horizon line here and I've got some like groins, like stone jetties that you have at a harbour somewhere. I've got a few of them different laced out and some different areas of water. Now I've got this, this idea from a tutorial, my latest live tutorial I've done with that heron or that stalk in there and it's given me some more ideas. I'm going to do some different colours as well. So I want like a orangey setting sky here. So I've got some craft paint and I want to add some retarder to that. That'll keep it wet. Oh, what happened there? That'll keep it wet longer so it won't dry so quick on me. And also it's going to give me, it's going to create like a magic white, the oil artist kit, so I can blend some good colours in the sky if I want to. But if you're not going to do a wickedly blended sky, I wouldn't even put the retarder with it. But most of my skies are like that, so I put the retarder there. So we've got all that mixed up there. And I'll just get the sky area crisscrossed onto the canvas. And I'm using my putter on a brush because it don't muck around, it gets it right in there, push it right into the teeth of the canvas. And I'll go to about me horizon line there for now and just push it everywhere. It's lumpy and blobby and all over the place messy, but that's okay because now I'm going to get this putter on a brush, go to the tips of the bristles, and now I'm just going to iron it nice and even and flat. That way I can put a nice sky on there. So I'm going for mainly a yellow orange sky, but I do have some darker sky colours that are going to go to the top there. I've got phalo blue, a linden crimson, Indian yellow and red gold. If you don't have red gold, find a deep orange. But I'll start with the Indian yellow and I'll just push that right into me brush there because I want the main sky orangey yellow and if anything I might have a bit of the dark colours at the top so there we go so let's scoot this right across the horizon line there beautiful go down past your line there beautiful scoot it up there like that beautiful simple now I'll pick up a bit more just so as I can get a nice deep I love these look at that deep band of uh, Indian yellow there right down the horizon. Try not to blend the buggery out of that, that's it nice and deep down there. Now I'll just simply wipe that brush, pick up the red gold or slash deep orange, grey and sienna is the same colour. And we'll go from about here, scoot that into the yellow there, scoot it like that, beautiful. And now I'll iron all the, hang on, let's get that up there first, up to the top where I want it, beautiful. Now I'm going to wipe that brush, because it's building up a lot of colours, and I want to control where my colours are going okay. So I want to get mainly that into the yellow there, and this bit of yellow there. Okay, now I'll start blending this bit up here with the tip of the brush, done. All right, I'll grab some of this magenta, permanent linden, I mean, and I want to get some of this scooted. See how I scooted that into there? I like to do it with some of this sometimes, just before I put my actual band of colour there. So it's just not like a band of colour. It's got a bit of charisma to it. That's up there, just missing the top. Oh, you can go to the top, like that. Go to the top. Now, now I've washed my putter on a brush, so I'm not bringing all that orange up into this area. Pick up the phalo blue. The phalo blue, in my opinion, is a deeper blue. I probably could have even used some dioxane purple, but this will mix with that alindrin. 
Look at that. Just up the very top. And a bit of a scoop in there. That's it. Now just blend that. Just blend it. Don't go towards the yellow, otherwise you'll start pulling greens in there. There we go. Now all that was done with this putter on a brush, applying and blending all at the same with the same brush. Now I've got a fan brush, I've got my blending brush, message me on Facebook if you want me to send you the blending brushes I use and that putter on a brush. I'm grabbing my fan brush and some titanium white out of the tube. And see here, I want to hide that transition, so I'll put some kind of cloud there, and it's going to pick up the sky colours to create, leave some gaps in between the white. Pick up your blending brush and also a cloth to wipe it at the same time as you're blending. So we'll get our bottom tinkered into the middle there like that. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, easy. You can do that. See the build up? Now you're constantly wiping. Let's grab another base of the cloud here somewhere. Boom. Now turn all that up. Turn all, twist it. Now I'm not blending very heavy. I'm just quickly wipe your brush. I'm leaving bits of white, heavy white, and then blended in white. You don't blend the buggery out of it, otherwise you could kill it. I've looked back at some of my videos when I'm blending and I've saw the cloud looking so good and I've kept blending and I'm like, what am I doing? I over blended it, but only I was to know that. There we go, we got some kind of cloud there that just was hiding that transition there. And we'll probably, got to clean that brush. Uh, we'll put something here, just Same thing again, just blend out there, blend the bottom somewhere, blend the top, wipe your brush. I should say. Now see the bottom, I just want to... Now before I add some yumminess, I'm just looking and I might want something with... I might have a... See here how that's dark there? I'm going to create like a bit of a pockety thing. Something like that. Leave the top sharp. Now I've got a little bit of blue in that blending brush, so go and wash your blending brush or just simply grab another one. I've got plenty here, so I'm just going to grab another one. Because I don't want blue colours getting a green tinge down here. And just blend this however you feel it might look. Now see how I've, I've created like an eye there or something? They just look artistic when you do them like that. And we'll probably put something scooting, radiating down there like that. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to imagine footprints of clouds that I've seen in the sky as I'm driving in my car, looking in the horizon throughout my windscreen. And, you know, these sort of shapes stay in my mind. And when you learn to paint, you're not only learning at the easel. When you're out and about, you could be adopting ideas and shapes and keeping them in your photographic memory. And that's all part of your art journey. Now I've got to get this a bit better blended there. It's starting to dry now. I'm ginning around like a... I love the way I've got a bit of bright intense in there as well. Now you can say to yourself, that's not a bad sky. 
and I can tell you, you can do that sky. Bit of practice, see how easy those clouds were to do? Now I'm going to have a bit of water here, but to make that water a bit interesting, I'm going to grab me finger, just picked up some of that titanium white, not too high up in the sky, but somewhere about here maybe. I'll just put that there, very minimal, and I'll try and use my finger and blend it into the sky there, just so it looks like the sun's, the moon, whatever it is, it's hiding down there. Now if you have a question about this painting or any of my art, leave me a comment below. How's that looking? That's looking all right. I was nearly going to finish the sky, but before I do, I just got to put a bit of yumminess in this one and that one because they're too, too much of a plain value within them. So I'll do this one first. Just get some yumminess. If you've watched my channels before, you know what yumminess is. And then all we do is gently sit that down. Just get the brush and leaving the vibrancy of it there. Wipe your brush. But sitting the edges of it down now, let's hope uh, the paint's still wet enough to do that. That'll do. It's not the best, but that'll, that'll do for what I'm after. A bit of something just maybe there. Sitting down, leaving the vibrancy there. Sit it down, leaving the vibrancy there. Use my finger a bit. Now see out here, there's my horizon line. This bit of rock breaker is going to come in front of it, but I want to get that water in there. Now it's going to be darker value than this water in the foreground. I want it to be this color, but dark of the sky color. So what I'm going to do, just to make it so simple, I'll grab a flat brush to do this. Um, I want it gray, but I'm not going to use just gray paint, all right? I want it to be an orangey gray, okay? Orangey gray, and to get it the darker value, that phalo blue. So it's a bluey gray with orange in it. It doesn't matter if it goes a bit green, because water can have green in it. So I've just put the white on that area, and I'm gonna grab my bullshit stick. This gives me straight lines that just make people go, bullshit, how'd you get that so straight? That's why I call it a bullshit stick. Now I'll get this paint, that's the color I wanted. This is gonna give my horizon line out there reasonably straight. Come along Ian, come along. All the way along there, stop, pick up some more. Come all the way to the edge here. And I'm resting on the stick, and boom, I'll just go for it. Now I've gotta clean my stick because I can feel um, lumps of paint and it's making me paintbrush go up and down. So I'm going to have to give this stick a bit of a clean. Now I'll get rid of that out of the way so as I can finish now over here. I didn't mix too much of this paint, that's alright, I didn't need much of it. So we just got that stamped into that groin area. We call them a groin here, I don't know what you call them in the part of the world where you live. It's a bit like a harbour, a secluded harbour where they, it's like a breakwater breaks the rough ocean water from coming into where all the boats are moored. People get on these rock jetties and fish off them. So I'll try and fix that bit there up, it looks a bit nonsense -y. there we go. It's just subtle but it's there. Now I have some more water, it's here and here. So I'm just going to grab the craft white in a smaller flat brush and just prime that up and it will help the coloured paint to glide across it a lot better than just the raw canvas. Come down here and down here. Now while you're putting the white on there for Ian, well what it does, it just makes the coloured paint sit on the canvas and glide better. If you use just the raw paint, it can be too harsh and you can 
value it up with this, I feel. Come along there. If I can go a bit wider than that, the rocks will be sat on top of the water. That's why I want to do this first. So I want to get this colour painted onto the canvas now. Now this water is going to be a bit more on the blue side. Grab some of that phalo blue and mix this colour up. So I'm pretty much grey blue there. And everywhere you put that white, just block it in. Block it in, block it in, block it in. Look at that, beautiful and easy. Get some more down here, just over here. I'm keeping these strokes as full as I can, not like as full as I can. Get that a bit more. And in cahoots with the horizon line. The horizon line's there, so are these. I don't want to get brush strokes all like that if I can help it. There we go. Push it in there. And if you want, you can put some other values. Let's get a little bit more of the blue there. I'm just going to make a, a slightly darker value on the palette down here, just so if we can, there we go, just something there, full stroke. Now this needs a lot of shimmer on it because it's got the light there. I'm going to grab some titanium white over here, just a bit on my brush, just to get some inkling of, yeah that'll do, added value. So there, I want to come about here and pretty much come down there, pick up some more and in this bit here, get a bit of tense right in the middle there, that'll do. Now I'm going to wipe that brush. I'm going to wipe the living buggery out of it and try not to get it contaminated with any other colours. And we'll just simply... There we go. Now that's done. Come into the watercolour and grab that white and push it back into the middle like that. Okay, just so you haven't got stop-start parts where they're not needed. Just like that. Done. Now we'll put a bit of shimmer on there. So I've got a toothbrush, I've got water there. I'm gonna rub it in the water and start pulling that craft paint. Just the craft paint's plenty. And get some of this white. We could probably contaminate it with a bit of that bluey gray. Not too much. It's just so long as it's a lighter value than what's on the water. And I wanna get shimmer everywhere now, so. Shimmer over there. Some of this. Shimmer out there, mainly down that band of the reflection ray you put there. And then in the rest of the water, because this has kind of got a lot of light hitting it, we'll get some shimmer on here. Bands of water there, light. This is just light hitting the water and probably can get some in there like that, just subtle. Now that colour, I want to get a darker mix of it, which is down here, and grab some more phalo blue into it. And just put those realistic bullshit wave lines in it, the, um, the swell lines. All right. Get that a bit better. scallops like I did in my latest bird with the silhouette there just things like that skinny fat there we go and that's just adding a bit more value to your painting uh, I'm not sure I really need any in here but I'll put one there just for the art's sake now I'm going to give that a dry, then I can add my rocks, my rock jetty, the groins, the, the breaker, the water breakers, because we've got the deep ocean out there, and this is kind of an area where you can fish and mourn and have your rocks, fish off the rocks. Now I'm going to use burnt umber. I don't need that much, Ian, so I'll just put the amount I want here, and I want to lighten it. I'll grab some craft white. 
and I've just got a small flat and I want to get two values of this burnt umber one light not this light I'll get it to the value I want and one a bit darker but the darker one I do want some black values in it now I'll see if I can use this stick now I've got a line here see this line here one's coming that way which is behind and this one's going to be in front which will be the darker one so I'm just going to use my flat brush and I want just lots of so I'll get the top cover that water it's rock so we want round rock shapes all the way along up and down but it's going to be reasonably level sitting that water back <laughs> have to give it a touch-up coat where all these dull areas are coming along this bit now get this scalloped level but different now I've grabbed the craft white and just a little bit of this watercolor I've just put in it because see how that browns on the water there I want to kind of just put some facets of um, movement in the water with this value of it just to sit it down so if anything it looks like it's sitting on there properly and it's a water line coming along here I suppose don't overdo it because you can start changing the, the aspects of your painting so I'm going to use the burn number for that I need enough of it pretty much all of that and I've got a little bit of black here I want to blackulate it Get something back out there like that, there we go. darken up any weak spots and sharpen up the top of those rocks I can do that off camera now I've dried it now I've added a little bit more black into that paint just so I can get some blacker shadowy colors within here hopefully it's black enough and then I'm going to use the pure burn umber on its own just to scallop in some rocks in there to add some detail so I've got some burn umber and I've got the slightest bit of white just to turn the lights on that a little bit just so it'll but it's darker than that value there so we got this pretty dark and this is going to create the um, hopefully the um, the rocks that's out there is going to be lighter now I'm going to try and get a bit of this color just to minimally hit some of them just to try and let's see on it to really give it some bullshit flavors so get yourself a bit of black on with me brush a lot more so let's just see we've got black bits all over how's that looking compared to yeah that's all right all right I've got my little liner brush I just got the black again and we'll probably Let's see if I can rest my hand on here. Yep, 
use what brush is probably going to work for you and um, I'm just going to try and put in, I don't know, the um, bits of a um, silhouette here. You know, people on there doing their thing. One there. Just sort of morphing under the top there. These little facets, like, um, you know, they could be some kind of antenna out there on that one. I don't know, I just put it there, but you know, <laughs> little things like that. And we'll pretty much put a person here. Oh, get some more paint on your brush, your, your wallop. I can detail these a bit better. But you get the idea, you get the, the gist of what I'm trying to do here. It's important with these little figures to get their, um, what do you call it, their neck and head distinctive from their body. like that head's not round enough but I don't want to go too big with it I want all these people within perspective of the painting all right just to finish it off we'll put a lot of seabirds hanging around birds everywhere Still many away, little little ends or something. You got so many way out there. Now there's a lot there because with these kind of groin things, there's always a lot of birds hanging around. People are eating their fish and chips and fishing in the afternoon and all sorts of. There's just hundreds of them. Put one over here. Oh, hey. Get there. Get them. Solid, you don't want them looking hairy and broken up. All different types. Lots of little ones just stacking out there as well, way out in the distance. Okay, I'll probably put a couple of little gap fillers here and there. Doing, doing. Over the water as well. All right, those birds add a lot of value. Give a lot of sauce for little spaghetti. Now I want to sit this groin down here. So we want to have some water just peaching against there. Coming along, keeping it level like this. Lots of water splashing around here. Now this is contaminated white, and if we need to, we can add the little bit of white to really accentuate it, which I think I will do. Bits are just dribbling all over this part of the rock here, a bit of it coming along there. Some water along here. So I've just got some pure white on that little brush now, and I want to kind of ease up some highlights on that to really accentuate a lot of that there. I've dried it so it's not going to mix with that powdery blue colour. Didn't dry it enough by the looks. And I want some Over here, get it on your brush level in. Oh, yeah. 
just little fiddly detail, but it does a lot. Come on, come on. There we go. Now, I'll put my autograph on here, and we'll whack a frame on it. I want to thank all my patrons who support my channel every month. Thank you very much. It is very much appreciated. It's people like you that give me boost in my channel. And check out the links in the description below. There's a dozen of them there. There's my art group page. Request to become a member. There's some questions to answer and just say you saw me on YouTube. And message me if you want to buy the blending brushes I use. Okay, let's whack the frame on there. Yeah, that's not too shabby, hey? We've got a bit of a sun setting, the fish are out, people are fishing, bits of distance there, little little inexpensive additives that give it value. And I know you can do that. All right, thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to tell your friends. And if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.